Hello everyone, it's your pal Dave back in the lab again. And what am I doing here? I'm here for one special reason, to make someone's dreams come true. In this segment, I take a random comment or email asking how to do a project and I will design it, build it, program it, and give the code to you and hopefully make your dreams come true. So for this episode, I got an email from someone named Norb and they said, Hey Dave, I play bass in a band and would like to play some synth chords with my foot while playing bass. Nothing complicated, just an organ or synth sound with polyphonic chords. I would love to use the equipment I already have. That would be the Boss FC50 foot controller and a Roland Sonic Cell sound module. Can the FC50 be reworked to do this? Well, Norb, thank you very much for your email. I got some good news and some bad news. So the, uh, the bad news is the FC50 seems to be able to only put out uh, MIDI program change messages which are not ideal for uh, what you want to do. So ideally, you're going to need something that's going to put out MIDI notes. Now, I do have a DIY MIDI controller project that you could uh, configure to actually do this. And you actually gave me a good idea for a future project, which is to build an actual MIDI foot keyboard, which I could actually use myself to control all this stuff. So stay tuned for something like that. So the good news is the project I came up with is probably gonna work the way you want. So it's a little box and it's gonna have a MIDI in and a MIDI out. So you can connect anything that generates MIDI notes to the input and then the output, you'll be able to program which chord will correspond to each MIDI note. And that's gonna allow you to trigger an entire chord with one foot switch. So I'm gonna call this project the Record, which is a very clever name and uh, let's take a look at how it works. But before we get started, I gotta take a minute and give a very special thanks to a company that is sponsoring this video and helping me make all my dreams come true, and that is PCB Way. PCB Way is a one-stop solution for all your circuit board and manufacturing needs. They can do circuit boards, multi-layer boards, aluminum boards, 3D printing, CNC machining, injection molding, and assembly. They can do it all. PCB Way is very maker-friendly with lots of services for small creators like myself. So check out PCB Way today and they can make your dream project a reality. Click the link in the video description to let them know that Dave sent you and you'll get yourself some free goodies. So thanks again to PCB Way. Okay, so let's take a look at what I came up with. So here is the project. I've got it on a single breadboard. So the brain of this unit is an Arduino Nano. We have two buttons as the interface, an LED as an indicator. We have a MIDI in and a MIDI out. So the way this works is we have our MIDI uh, note source. In this case, I'm just using this, this keyboard. And I've got a MIDI cable coming out, going into the MIDI input port of the record. And then I've got a MIDI out going to your sound source, whatever that may be. So if you don't program anything in, uh, it's just going to take whatever key you press and put that note out to your sound module. Now, the way this works is you can take any key and program up to eight notes into that key. So on our box, we have two buttons. This button here is the bypass button and this is the program button. So to program a key, what you do is you hit the program button and you'll see the LED will blink slow. Now you press the key you want to program, in this case the C here. And now you can see the LED is blinking fast. Now I can enter up to eight notes. So I'm just gonna enter, say like a C minor type chord. And once I'm done, I can hit the button again to store it. Now when I press this key, I get all those notes. So it does respond to velocity, so if I hit the note soft, and get harder, you can see the volume kind of changes as you would expect. 
Now let's program a couple more keys. So once again, I will push the program button. The slow blink means select a key. So I'll select this D note. And let's do like a D minor kind of thing. Now, like I said, you can get up to eight notes into a key. If I played more than eighth notes, then it's automatically just gonna kick me out of program mode and store it. Uh, if I want to store anything less than eighth notes, just hit the button when I'm done. And let's program in one more. How about on this uh, D sharp? Okay, so now I have those three chords programmed in. And any note that doesn't have anything programmed in will just, will just be a normal note. And you can see this light flashes when it gets MIDI data to kind of show you that it's actually working. So you could actually play uh, normal keys and the chord keys at the same time if you want to. So I could do. So that's kind of cool. Okay, now another couple of features. Let's say I want to remove the chord from one of the keys. So all I have to do is go back to program mode, select the key I want, and just exit out without entering any notes. And now that is back to just being a normal note. Now let's take a look at the bypass button. So if the light is on, that means my effect is active. I'm going to get my chords. Now, if I push the bypass button, the light's going to go off and now it's just going to pass the notes through and push it again. And I'm back to my normal chord mode. So this the project will record uh, up to 88 notes. So basically a full standard keyboard. So I can go down an octave and I can program more chords in this octave if I want or up an octave. So basically any 88 key keyboard note will work with this. Now there's one more thing you can do. Let's say I want to erase all my programming and go back to a fresh start. What you do is you hold down both buttons for five seconds and then you'll see the LED flash. And that means we're back to normal. Everything I programmed is gone. And that's basically how it works. Okay, so let's take a look at the schematic and the circuit on my breadboard and you can see how I built this up. So first of all, let's talk about the power situation. So here's the Arduino Nano in the schematic, and you can see I've got a DC jack. So when I did the demo for this, I actually plugged a USB cable in here, and I powered it with the USB power. But I figure since you're using this for stage, you may want something a little more robust. So let me show you how you can use an external DC power supply to power this. So you're gonna get a DC power supply and it can be from seven to 12 volts. I usually use nine volts because it's right in the middle, um, but no lower than seven, no higher than 12. Now you're gonna take the positive pin from your adapter and you're gonna run it to VN. So on the Arduino, the VN is this corner pin right here. The ground of your adapter, you can run it to any ground point. So your Arduino has a couple of ground points, but I'll show you how I've got this wired in just a sec. But what's gonna happen is that the Arduino is going to take that, that nine volt in into the VN pin, and it's gonna regulate it down to five volts, and then make that five volts available at the five V pin. So if you look what I got here, I've got my 5V pin running to this red strip on my breadboard. So basically that means 5 volts is going to be available at any point on this red strip. 
Now I've got my GND pin or my ground pin on my Arduino running to the blue strip. So anything on that blue strip is going to be ground. Now there's one thing to be aware of. If you're going to reprogram your Arduino with the USB cable, make sure you disconnect your power adapter. So you don't want to power it from the USB and the power adapter at the same time. So uh, to program, remove your power adapter, plug in your USB, send up the program, remove the USB, and then repower it with your DC adapter. So let's take a look at the rest of the circuit. So we've got our indicator LED, and here it is here. So if you notice, we're going from pin D12 on the Arduino, through the LED, through a 470 ohm resistor to ground. So if you look on my breadboard, here's D12. I've got a red wire kind of running along the breadboard to the positive pin or the anode pin on my LED. The LED jumps across the middle of the board and then we have it connecting to the ground strip through the 470 ohm resistor. Now the two switches are very simple. Basically one side of the switch is gonna to go to ground. So I've got a little wire on each of the switches going to that blue ground strip. And then I've got two jumper wires, one going from the first switch to uh, D2 on my Arduino and the other going to D3 on the Arduino. Probably the most complicated part is the MIDI input. Now to do a MIDI input, you need to buffer it with an optocoupler and the 6N138 is the one I'm using in this circuit. And here it is right there, this little chip. Now, when you number the pins on this chip, uh, there'll be a mark on one side. Basically, the, on, on my chip, it's on the right side here. So when you number the pins, you go counterclockwise. So this pin on the corner, upper corner is one, and then you go one, two, three, four, and then counterclockwise, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so counterclockwise direction. So we've got five volts going into pin eight. So pin eight is this corner pin right here. So I've just got a wire running from my red five volt strip right into that pin. And then we've got a uh, five volts going into pin six through a 470 ohm resistor. So the red uh, strip here, 470 ohm resistor going into pin six. And we're also taking that pin six and we're running a wire to our RX pin, the receiver pin on the Arduino. Now, if you notice, I've got indicated a jumper on the schematic. Now, the jumper is basically, it's two pins and you get a little uh, cap that goes over the pins that connects them together and you can remove that cap and break the connection. Now, why would I want to do that? When you're programming the Arduino, the USB coming in here is connected to this RX and TX pin here. So when I'm loading that pin down with my MIDI input circuit, it's not going to allow the program to get to the Arduino. So I need a way to break that connection. So when I'm doing it on the breadboard, all I have to do is I just pull the wire out, upload the program, and then when I'm done, put the wire back in to run it. But in a permanent soldered version, you probably want to add a little jumper in case you need to reprogram it for whatever reason. Finally, we have a 1K resistor going from pin 7 to the ground strip. Now on the other side of the chip, we have a diode connecting uh, between pins 2 and pins 3. I'm using a 1N914 diode. So when you're reading the schematic, the little line on the top of the diode symbol is going to be the same as the line on the diode. So you'll see one side of the diode will have a little stripe on it. Make sure the stripe is going to pin two and the other side is going to pin three. Now I've got a 220 ohm resistor going to pin four on my MIDI jack. Now when you're numbering the jack, if you look at the back of the jack, you'll see the center pin Pin four is the pin directly to the left of the center pin. And then you can see we've got the other side of the jack, pin five going to pin three on the chip, and I've got a little wire running across here. So pin five is the pin directly to the right of the center pin when you're looking at the back of the jack. Now the MIDI output circuit is much simpler. So here's my MIDI jack. 
I've got the middle pin or pin two connected to ground. So I'm basically running a couple of wires to connect it to this ground strip. Uh, pin four of the jack is going to five volts through a 220 ohm resistor. So here's my five volt strip. I've got a wire going to this 220 ohm resistor, jumping the middle of the board to pin four on the jack. And pin five is going through a 220 ohm resistor. And I've got this long jumper wire that's taking it all the way to my TX pin on the Arduino. And that's how you can build the circuit. Okay, so now let's take a look at the code and talk about how we're going to program your actual Arduino. So I'll put a link in the video description where you can download this code. Just download it, open it up in your Arduino software. Now, first of all, we're going to need a few libraries to make this work. So we're going to need the EEPROM library, which should come with the Arduino software. You're going to need the MIDI library and the Bounce2 library. Now, to check if you have these, go to Sketch, Include Library, and then scroll down, and you should see it. There's MIDI library, and there is Bounce2. Now, if you don't see those there, you're going to need to install them. So go back to the top and go to Manage Libraries. Now, after a while, you'll get your library manager pop up. You can do a search for Arduino MIDI. And you're going to want to scroll down until you see MIDI Library by Francois Best. You know, select the latest version and click Install. And for the uh, Bounce Library, you're going to want to do a search for Bounce 2 and find uh, Bounce 2 by Thomas Fredericks and just install that one. And then restart your Arduino software and those libraries should show up in your list. Now to configure the program, all you need to do is figure out which MIDI channel you want this to work on. So by default, it works on channel 1, but if you want to change that to 2, just change the 1 to a 2. So that is the MIDI channel number that's going to be received and transmitted. So make sure you set your keyboard and your sound module to this MIDI channel. That's really all you need to configure. So plug a USB cable into your Arduino. And if you go to Tools, you're going to want to set the board type to uh, Arduino Nano. So if you go to AVR Boards, there it is right there. Now, depending on uh, which Arduino Nano you get, whether it's a, a bootleg version or a real Arduino, you may need to select old bootloader. So normally you'd select Atmega 328P. If you're having problems getting the program with a, a uh, let's say, an off-brand Arduino, uh, you can select old bootloader and that will normally make it work. And uh, once your Arduino is plugged in, your computer should assign it a COM port. So mine is COM4. Yours could be different, but just make sure it's selected. Now, remember, before we upload the program, we have to disconnect our MIDI input from the Arduino. So I'm going to unplug my cable. And I'm going to click the Upload button. You'll see some flashy activity. And once you see done uploading, reconnect your cable and you should be good to go. Well, there you go, Norb. I hope I managed to make at least a couple of your dreams come true. Let me know how it works out. But before we go, let's thank some very special people. Those are my patrons on Patreon. Thank you very much, guys, for your support. And let's enjoy your names. <laughs>